Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This week's video is about regen braking and it looks a bit at an interesting project that I'm helping out with on Discord. This is something more geared to folks that are using things like Saron bikes, lightning rods, drive systems and hub motors because anything that you have with the freewheel, whether it is a hub or a mid-drive, it's not able to use regen because of the nature of how it works. When the free wheel is engaged, there's no force to turn the motor. So there's no braking force that's generated and there's no power sent back to the battery. So for that reason, uh, you can't use regen with CYC or BBS HD bikes. So this, this project aims to give people more options when it comes to variable regen braking which is the best type of regen braking. It's a really awesome feature and something I think people really should be asking for and looking for when they're picking out controllers to use with their e-bike projects because not every control system out there has the ability to allow you to have regen at all, never mind variable regen braking. Uh, most of the setups that you can get it with are either an on or off style of regen. So. The common methods of regen braking on e-bikes fall into three categories pretty much. You've got a button activated regen, you've got throttle off, and you've got the variable regen. And of the three, the variable is by far the best because it gives you direct control over the amount of braking force applied. Throttle off regen is pretty much what it says. So you're, you're riding along, you release the throttle, and as soon as you do, the regeneration is activated and the bike will slow down. Uh, it's pretty limiting because once you get up to a certain speed, you can't just let off and let the bike cruise. As soon as you do, the bike's going to start to slow down. So you've got to kind of constantly stay on the throttle. Um, you can't modulate the strength. And the only way you can change the actual strength of the regen with the throttle off is in the settings. Um, you can also map uh, a button to do the regen for you. So if you just push a button, then it, it activates it, which means that you can coast along without the regen activating, but it's still the same level of regen, whether it's activated with a button or, or, or with the roll off, unless you change it in the settings. Variable regen is currently usually done using a, a throttle. So you set your maximum amount of regen power, and then as the throttle is twisted, you can increase the amount of regenerative braking to a maximum that you've determined in the settings. And you can use pretty much any throttle for this. Uh, the most common being an inverted half twist, which is what I use on my Surron. So you basically, you, you roll the throttle forwards to increase the regen. You can also use a thumb throttle. So as you depress the thumb throttle down, you also would activate the regen. What we're finding though, is that some people just don't find the throttle to be a natural feel for braking. Everyone is kind of conditioned, including myself, from riding a bicycle to use a lever for braking. And you can get used to using the throttle. And once you do, it is really, really good. And I know lots of people that now swear by it, but it takes time. And when I started using it on my Saran, I found that I kept kind of forgetting to roll the throttle and I'd be trying to squeeze the lever um, because you squeeze a lever to do braking. Like it, it's just the way it's kind of always been. So what we want to do with this project is to make it easier for people to use variable regen and more attractive for people to use variable regen because it's a brilliant feature. Um, so we want to have it activated with a brake lever. Uh, there's a couple of ways of doing this um, that we're looking at. And the first is to use a physical cable actuated sensor. So like uh, I've got one here. So this part cable end would be hooked up to a brake lever. And then when the brake lever pulls, it about activates this part. And this is what would vary the amount of braking. So you would have sort of no braking and then you would have like 100% regen braking on that. And that's uh, that works like that. Um, Rio actually already has a working prototype of this on his Surron, and he's very much enjoying the feel of it. There are a couple of drawbacks with this particular method, and that's the, the quite bulky nature of the parts here. Like getting this getting this mounted um, is a little bit tricky, um, and that's something that I'll be working on to try and try and make that a bit easier. Um, he's used it to descend like huge mountains like all the way to the bottom um, just using the the regen um, in place of his back 
brake lever. And that is, I guess, the kind of the other drawback is that I don't really see a way of using this along with the hydraulic type brakes that most people use. So really, um, you would have then a front brake and then just a regen brake uh, in place of the rear one, um, which seems to be okay. Rio's not having any problems with it, um, but some people might not like that method. So the second method to do this is something that Derek's uh, from Discord is working on. And this uses a, uh, a similar technique to the magnetic brake cutoffs. So basically you move a magnet away from the sensor and then the regen braking force is increased. And it's been tested in lab conditions. Um, so we're gonna see how this one functions in, in real life. So uh, my part of the project here is to create the, the housing uh, that will hold the sensor. Uh, that puts it up to the magnet, which we've got glued on there. So basically, as you activate the brake lever, it moves the magnet away from where the sensor is in the end, and then that gradually increases the regen braking force. Um, so I, I think we can have it so you can do most of the regen without activating the rear brake, which would be, which would be kind of useful. And then you can only really use the rear brake when you really, really kind of need need to stop. So you would have full regen at that point anyway. So it's going to be tested uh, using some, some XT brakes. And then if everything's working, then I'm going to start making some more parts here that would work with some of the other popular stuff, like a lot of people use Hope brakes, and then there's Magura brakes as well. So uh, that's, the, uh, that's how the mechanism itself uh, is going to work. What will be good with this version is that you'll retain the use still of the rear hydraulic brake. And you can also set it up likely so that you get most of the regen braking occurring before the rear brake starts to actuate. So you don't have to use the rear brake if you don't really want to, unless you, you really need to stop, in which case you could activate your full regen and then the rear braking as well. Um, some potential drawbacks that I see with this are mainly kind of from like a safety point of view, because if you set it high enough, regen is perfectly capable of locking up a rear wheel. So if the magnet, for example, was to become detached or fall off, and that happens during riding, you could suddenly lock up your back wheel, which obviously would not be the, the greatest thing. So perhaps the uh, the glue on method that we've currently got going might need to be changed into into something better. Um, so that's that's it for for today with with the regen braking. Um, love to hear what you think. Um, if you want to get in touch with with any of the people involved here, uh, you can do so on our Discord server. Uh, we're going to continue working on this and hopefully bring you some uh, some videos of it being tested and used. Huge thank you um, as always to the channel members. Uh, your contributions really help a massive amount on the channel. Thank you very much. And thank you also to everyone else for, for watching. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers.